Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. I want to take you back a little bit to your beginnings together. You were college roommates. No, you weren't college roommates? L loose definition. <laughs> All right. You said you thought you needed Steve. You were in Seattle. Business the demands of the business were such that you really needed him. W did you wait to finish business school, or what, what was the what was the <laughs> dynamic there? This guy calls. This is a classic. I, I get this phone call. I'm living for like a hundred bucks a month in downtown Palo Alto in a flea-ridden room, and I pick up the phone. It's Bill. He says, "Hey, gosh, what are you doing, Bill? I'm I'm still in school. <laughs> oh God, too bad." <laughs> God, too bad you don't have a twin brother or something. We could really use something. The guy just didn't come out and say it. <laughs> and then he said, oh, well, too bad, too bad. Hung up. <laughs> that was the sales call. Even though you only had one year of business school and some time at Procter & Gamble, you did this kind of business analysis of I, I did no business analysis. <laughs> every customer said their stuff was late. <laughs> and everybody at Microsoft said they had to work overtime. Not overtime, but over, 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 overtime. They were just <laughs> always at work. And we were still not doing anything. So. And I sat down, I think, with Paul or somebody. We said we need 18 new people. We only had 30 people at the time. And so I had this just very conservative view of our financial limits that, at least in terms of the revenue at that point, 18 people was, was so too much. So you believe you needed revenue, unlike, say, Web 2.0 people now, you believe revenue uh, was important to have for a while to bring in. And after about a month, I found that we had 30 people. I'd be begging and we might get 31. And I was kind of the bookkeeper. The bookkeeper quit my first day. And I wondered, <laughs> why did I leave Stanford Business School for this? And so I went out to dinner with Bill and his dad. And... Bill kind of gave me the real pitch, which was we could put a computer on every desk in every home. I, I you know, it might be at this stage a bit uh, apocryphal, but I claim Bill invented that that night to really paint the vision for me of what was possible. I needed Steve. I needed the skills he had, the energy he had. I needed a partner who we could, you know, commiserate and learn together about what kind of business this would be. And literally, after that one, you know, business discussion, uh, that we did come up with a solution to, Which uh, we move forward. What was the solution? Bill said, prove we can hire one good guy and we'll worry about two through 18. <laughs> and that became our management approach for the next 20 years. Right. And that's a serious issue with you that you, if you could imagine a scenario where you didn't get paid by most of your, that I mean, your formula, customers are a little bigger now. No that, rational financial person would agree with that. But the notion, <laughs> we take all our risk technologically, why take a lick of financial risk? What, what does it buy? What it, I mean, it buys incrementals, you know, sort of weirdo return things. No, it doesn't really buy anything. All of the leverage in our business is on new products with new revenue streams. So why take financial risk? So, but you, you guys have, have been doing this together for how many years now? Tw 28. 20 what, years. What, what and, and, was the partnerships? What, what did you see in each other? What did you need from him that you couldn't get from any other business executive? You just happened to know someone who was in business school. Well, Steve is super smart, great at lots of things I'm not. But I think the key thing was doing it together. E either of us individually could not have done it. Hiring great people. He went and hired the 18 people, but the good thing is the business, the income, always stayed ahead. So I never had to say to him, uh, hey, you've got to stop. I remember when we went moved into a new office building, there was this nice stairway where I said to him, that's the stairway I'll walk down when i got to come tell you <laughs> you've gotten ahead. But I never made that, that trip. And there's this um, public perception that you are the product or technology guy, you are the sales guy. Is that right, or was your, uh, were the roles more diffuse than that, or, or how would you describe it? Well, there's a lot more to building a business than just technology and just sales. Right. There's picking people, there's the organization, the process, uh, the, the strategy. And Steve and I have done that, that stuff together every step of the way. Thank you were involved in the first development team, is that correct? And also in the IBM talk? I, I ran the wi Windows 1.0 development team. What does I mean, that I, mean? I have run software development <laughs> projects. Can you, I am not an engineer. I have never written you, a line of production software. Never. Ne you can't come. No. And how, well, 
yeah, basically. And I won't call it six basic so, programs. So sometimes. Windows 1.0, oh, how was Windows 1.0 oh a big seller? How do you feel about that? It was a red hot ball. <laughs> it, you would have loved it. <laughs> if you hadn't been writing about armaments, you would have loved Windows 1.0. Oh. No, know, actually, it, it, Windows 1.0 oh was good because we continued to invest in it. It was a foundation to go do something, and it took, you know, the way we like to. We keep after it and after it and after it. In a sense, you could say it met its goals, and, you know, it's a little hard to look back now and say, there was something wrong with the history. The history seems to play down all right. Yeah, you did, guys did all right. But would you call yourself a businessman? Would you? If you sure, a I mean, you know, sales minus costs equal profit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got that. No, I thank you so much. Well, no, is but, there more? No, no. no, no. <laughs> We're gonna get into the present in a second. But how do you look at that now that you're making this transition? It's been fantastic. You know, let me go off and do the product work I wanted to do. And there was a whole thing at the company that the scale was getting so big that the way I had run it, uh, in terms of just a few people knowing things, had really run out of gas probably a couple years before Steve took charge. And so very quickly he had to figure out, okay, what is the senior leadership team? What is the executive staff team? How are we taking these processes and getting them to scale with the, the size of the success we have. And so he really took that on because it was almost remedial by the time uh, he took charge. And that system is what's uh, been key for us these last eight years. Do you get a veto? Do you get the ultimate veto? No.